Welcome to Civil War Digital Digest. I'm Will. Today we're going to start a new part of the Digest and we're going to talk about past times soldiers on both sides of the war had when they weren't actively engaged in soldiering. Now we know that soldiers spent a lot of time marching, less time fighting, and even more time than the both in camp. Yep, camp had duties. It had fatigue duty, guard duty, it had drill, but there's still a lot of time left. What do you do with it? One of the big pastimes is to play games. Now, the games we have represented here today are in no way a complete look at a soldier's games that were available during the Civil War. Today, we're going to limit ourselves to four categories of games. We're going to limit ourselves to cards, dice, dominoes, and chess and checkers. Now, just like today, you want to learn to play a game, you might look up a game rules and reference in a book called Hoyle. Happened the same for a Civil War soldier, he could do the same thing. In 1864, the American Hoyle, or a Gentleman's Handbook of Games, was published and the author was credited as Trumps, and Trumps was put in quotes. So, why did we pick these? Well, we've had a lot of people step forward and offer to share original items with us so that we can use them in this episode. And whether you're a hobby historian who's looking for a way to throw a party in the evening, whether you're a teacher looking for a way to engage your classroom, or the low-hanging fruit, if you're a living historian looking for something to do in camp, all of these are easy to get your hands on and use. Let's start taking a look. Okay, let's look at our first segment. It's gonna be about cards. During the 19th century, some of the fellows called it throwing the papers, and games of chance were so prevalent in 1864, and the Federal Army of the James soldiers often called themselves the Army of the Games. Well, what do cards do for a soldier? They're great. They're small, they're light. When you have to carry everything with you, that fits the bill. Whether you're enlisted men with a haversack, knapsack, or blanket roll, or whether you're an officer with radically shrinking baggage wagons that you now have to carry on your own. So popular games in the Civil War era, four cards were Poker, 21, Kino, Euchre, and Old Sweat are all fours. All of these games can be found in Hoyles, and we're going to feature some of them in later episodes. The cards on the table in front of me today are reproductions, but we've had two collectors, Tom Burke and Paul McKee, step up, and the still photos you're seeing are actually original cards from the war. Paul's set were carried by Lieutenant John Larkin from Company B, 57th Illinois. During part of his service, Lieutenant Larkin was the division officer for the 4th Division, 15th Army Corps in the Western Theater. Cards were played by armies on both sides. There is a note in several, in several secondary sources saying the cards were getting worn out and harder to find in the Confederacy later in the war, and it was one item they might ask for if soldiers met across the lines to trade. Now, poker fans, there's a lot of gambling that went on in the armies. It doesn't always have to be for money. Poker chips were available, and the set Mitch Kreidel sent for us to take a look at are an excellent example. Let's move on. Dice. Again, they're small, they fit in a pocket. Dice are almost always used for gambling, and this will get soldiers and officers in trouble, as we've already mentioned. Probably the two most common dice games out there were craps and chuckaluck. Craps is well known today. Let's talk about chuckaluck. We're going to do an episode on how you play it in a little bit, but it did cause trouble in the ranks. Let's hear what an, a soldier in the 34th Illinois had to say. Card playing and gambling is common, and many of the boys have lost their $26 they received last payday. Charles Adam Weatherby. Well, the money's going out on gambling, whether cards or whether dice. Same sort of problem happened on the other side. Uh, soldier David Holt from the 16th Mississippi Company D wrote about a chaplain giving a moving sermon about repenting from sins such as card games and dice. Several of the men lined up. Here's what he had to say the story finished as. And at the head of the line was Hawkins, the Chuck Luck player. The rest of us walked on the side of the road so as not to be identified with the candidates. Hawkins commenced to take the dice one by one out of his pocket and shoot them like marbles way over into the grass. Some fellow hollered, Hawkins, have a care. You will need those dice after the campaign is over. To which Hawkins replied, I don't care a damn. I can buy more when I need them. Well, with a curse recorded in a 19th century diary and a flippant attitude, one might ask how much Soldier Hawkins really was repenting. 
but at least the thought was there. Let's move on. The next category of games is dominoes. Dominoes came in ivory, bone, and wood. We've got a nice set here that Mitch Kreidel shared with us. This original set was carried by James Collins. He was a surgeon in the 32nd Pennsylvania. This was his set. A great look at a bone set. Remember, I also said wood. Collector Paul McKee has shared a original set with us, and this set was carried by Captain Jane Sandburn of Company D, 57th New Hampshire Infantry. The lid appears to be missing. It looks like these are homemade. Dominoes, Hoyle has several different games that can be made out of dominoes, and if you've also got your cards, there's one version of poker that involves dominoes, so you can combine the two. Our final category today is chess and checkers. There's an excellent discussion about the quality of life uh, that was given by the chess and checkers. The members of the field and staff do not play cards on account of the example, except myself. They all play chess or dominoes. Burt Green Wilder. We've had a couple of collectors, including Tom Burke, send us photos of their collections. And we see chess boards like this reproduction. Checkers and chess boards could also be made out of painted cloth uh, folded up. Some soldiers put them on the back of their gum blankets like this reproduction. You can use checkers sets, or if you're using poker chips, go ahead and use those for checkers so you have less in your knapsack. Well, games are good. Gambling doesn't necessarily follow as a positive in the Army. We scoured the regulations. There's only one reference in the United States regulations that goes against betting, and that is for officers in charge of federal funds, uh, paymasters, and other such. Their, their regulations and the Articles of War are quiet on the rest. However, the mores of the 19th century made gambling very bad. Most regimental brigade or division officers would go ahead and make rules against it, and some soldiers were actually court-martialed for it. Researcher Marty Bertera sent us three examples of lieutenants who were court-martialed. We'll share one with you, and that is 2nd Lieutenant Pratt of the 1st Michigan Infantry in April 1863, played cards with enlisted men. Now, there's two things going here. There could be gambling. We're also dealing with separation between officers and NCOs, and all three references that Marty sent us were of 2nd Lieutenants. We sort of have a feeling this might be soldiers recently promoted or recently commissioned out of the ranks to officers still needing to learn the separation there. Lieutenant Pratt was found guilty. Officers aren't the only one. Enlisted men in the 93rd New York had orders not to gamble and their colonel was so fed up with them not following the orders that he sentenced two of the soldiers to wear a sign that says gambler on their back and under guard have to throw dice at a table in the hot sun all day. Harper shares a wonderful image of this episode with us. So we have cards, we have dice, we have dominoes, and we have chess and checkers. If you're looking for a way to gain the experience of the soldiers, go to Google, look up the 1864 Hoyle, pick one of your games or watch a future episode here on the Civil War Digital Digest. Great ways to get in touch. For the Civil War Digital Digest, thanks for spending your time with us today. If you've liked the episode, please hit like and make sure you're subscribed to the Civil War Digital Digest. We'll see you in two weeks with another episode.